Good morning, it's Joyful Hermit. Well, this will be short. I'm heading off to the nephrologist. It's not even, it's a nurse practitioner. And I was having so many other blood tests, I didn't get one for her. Hopefully she can use the one last week from the oncologist. <laughs> so many things going on in my exciting life. But I also yesterday had another visit from the HOA, husband and wife. The man is the president. Uh, he was here last uh, spring several times, and I thought we had it very clear. A disabled person is really pretty much out of reach of a HOA as far as not to be pressured, being given reasonable accommodation because of their disability, um, Deadlines are a moot point, and I've explained. I explained the arachnoiditis, wrote it out, had him look it up. Uh, a man was causing trouble in the neighborhood against me and going around telling people I was crazy and trying to make a big deal out of a place around my front window where the siding is off, just a foot. goes. It goes around like this, like this. And the window is inset, and the siding is off because I'm putting a product called Air Stone. It looks like actual stone. That's going to go on that whole section, not only around the inset that only has the flashing and the, the, the house wrap for now, but the whole front of the, around that window, the flap, is all going to be this lovely Air Stone, which requires mortar plus some other products that won't go into how to construct it. But um, I have all the materials. I had it approved by the HOA. But my knee surgery ended up a failure. So I could not use my knee for a long, long time. Then by the time it started to get, you know, walkable and everything and not as horribly painful, and also at the same time my kidneys were going out and I didn't realize it. So... Um, all this was going on, and you cannot use mortar in freezing weather, or even cold weather, nor paint. So they came back yesterday. My handyman was here, the one I'm going to have. He is an assignment from God for me, definitely. The other young man, I called him, and he totally blew me off, you know, was totally not interested him haw, he slammed with work, he no time, hadn't figured out his bids or anything like that. So I could tell he was not interested, and I said, well, this means goodbye, and yes, so goodbye. And he was a lot more expensive. So I knew, and, and um, my handyman has been uh, doing better, and I had a talk with him yesterday. Uh, I have to really massage it in. And I even said a loud prayer when he was getting very frustrated about the light fixture. We were hanging the light fixture in the entry hall. And it was a complex fixture. I admit it is. The directions are terrible. I couldn't figure out very well. I could a little bit better, but not much. And So we were working on that. But uh, what I paid for him to install it per hour was about a third less than what the young young man wanted to install that. So I, I'm doing much better with what I've got, and I talked with the handyman about he's very intelligent, he's got passion, and that I have high hopes for him and expectations in the spiritual life. I said, it's something I know you could grab onto and come to greatness. I said, well, of course, you've already said you're spiritually perfected. Said, well, I was just joking. I said, well, I I was hoping that you were. But anyway, so things are going better. I said this aloud prayer when he was verbalizing how frustrated he was, and I could tell he was, over the light fixture. And then he starts to shut down when he gets frustrated, and I said this prayer aloud to Jesus to help us stay calm, and to help us figure out, since the directions were terrible, how to, inst how to install certain aspects of it. 
Um, and right away, he had an idea, the handyman did, to turn some little things upside down and try it that way, and it worked. And I said a prayer aloud, thanking Jesus, and talked to him about how, he says, oh, you know, you're just talking. I said, no, these are prayers, and this is what will always help you whenever you get frustrated. But back to the HOA couple, I was so frustrated and so upset. They were back yapping again about, you know, that window, about paint. I've painted the back of the house so far, but one section, small section needs a second coat. Overnight, when I was painting last fall, the weather turned. And I finally said to them, you have to know what you're doing when you're doing remodeling. And I said, has to be 55 consistently or higher, but not too hot when you paint. I said, it has to be a certain temperature before you do mortar. I said, the stonework is going to get done. I, they said, well, is someone here working? I said, yes, today. Here it is Sunday. I don't like to work on Sunday, but to me, every day is the Lord's day. God understands. I've asked him to please understand. And God is in me and with me all the time. I said, yes, and we're trying to work. And here you are. Then the woman started talking about uh, she would even come and start trimming. I have nothing to trim. The roses need cutting back, but it doesn't have to be done yet. I usually do that maybe the second week in March. Um, but I wasn't doing it yesterday. I was working on other things. <laughs> Obviously, I had my work clothes on. And, and then she wanted to come and, and uh, clean up. And all the yard, she said, all the... I said, well, I have leaves as mulch around things for uh, for my, my perennials. I said, you don't just take things up until it's time. I said, it's not time yet to clean out all of the mulch, the leaf, the compost that you put down. You know, it just frustrated me. Talk about being frustrated and praying Lord, help me. And I had to run to the uh, electrical supply and get some parts for the light project, the light hanging project. And there was a young woman in the store, a clerk, maybe in early 30s or 28, 30, a single, a very quiet, unassuming type young woman. And she says, I get this all the time. Single, no one there. To you seem vulnerable. We we seem vulnerable. I seem probably very vulnerable, not too bright. I probably seem uh, incompetent in doing about anything, and I'm I'm sure I come off very weak and old. Obviously, I look ancient, but that's no reason to bully someone repeatedly. I've been over and over with these HOA people. They're not harassing other people and they lie. They've, they three times now over a year have talked about another homeowner who is refusing to do his work, his housework or whatever they say it is, because of my front window. <laughs> well, how how long do they let someone without a handicap, without a disability, do that? No, there's no one out there. I've been all over this neighborhood. There's no one doing any work on their house. So it, it just, I thought, Lord, preserve me. So I've been praying about it. I told them last spring and summer, that if they did not stop, my, my pain doctor has told them, leave her alone, no stress, she's healing, she's not well, 
She needs her time to rest. She's got chronic pain. And I have my documentation for disability for 36 and a half years. But there's the world coming in, and I know who's behind it. It's the devil. And this old couple that are on my case, they're old, but they're well off. They don't have any body problems, no, no physical handicaps. And they can hire anybody any second they want to even pick up dog poop if they want. They don't have a dog, but, you know, it. they don't have to do any work. They've not had handicap for years. They're very able-bodied. They're in great shape. They're younger than me, maybe by five or eight years. But And so people get a sense of entitlement and an attitude of pushing, pushing, pushing a disabled single woman who's doing work that they've never done. And I must stand out is quite different or incompetent to do it. But I've been working here for five years off and on. And it's um, it's something that I don't know if the devil is in these people trying to harass and waste my time and energy and mental space. Or if if they have Alzheimer's and can't remember our discussion already about the ADA, the Americans with Disability Act, and the laws involving not harassing a disabled person, I don't know what the problem is. But I last night was praying quite a bit in the night for this couple. And there's another man and his wife who do it also. I have ring on the on my phone. I can if I see the other man there, nickname is Bully Bob, there I don't go to the door. Because there's no sense in I can't do things until the weather is warmer. I can't do the work that is visible for them. The stonework and the painting. So <laughs> what do we do? when we want to stay centered in God and we're doing our private little work, working hard, working little B here in my hermitage, always have the yard mode. People stop and rave about the flowers in the spring and summer and fall that I have mulch around so that they will be lovely and healthy so they don't die out. So they're annuals and I can get... These, these snapdragons to come back and spread just by leaf mulching them. And then, probably be April or end of March, I will clean up all the leaves. And I need to do that work. It forces me to stretch and move and bend and do all those good things that will help my intestines also, but build up my spine muscles. So um, I might mention to the woman, if I see her again, not on my property, I hope, unless I can somehow be a Christian witness to her of some sort. But they're not approaching in this way. What does a person do? Then I read a, a, a writing by St. Faustina this morning in the Mass, the Scriptures. Um, there's usually some kind of a reading from a saint or a priest or holy person, something that they have written or spoken, sermon, that comes along with the scriptures I get coming to me on my laptop for the daily mass readings. And there was St. Faustina talking to me about being kind to your neighbor, merciful to your neighbor, loving kindness, mercy to the neighbor, kept repeating the neighbor. <laughs> And I thought, here I am, you know, grumbling and frustrated. I have said the little prayer I said aloud with the handyman yesterday, but this time I said it for me with the, with the HOA people. And I know a lot of people make jokes about the Homeowner Association 
people who go for those volunteer, usually, always, usually, are retired people who miss their power and their control. So they make a big deal out of being president or vice president and going around. But who do they pick on? The single old lady who's renovating her home. has I have a totally landscape now. Takes time to do these things. And I like to do things myself. I like to be creatively engaged. Doing manual labor, it's part of my prayer life. So I have to come to a decision. Is it time to ask the pain doctor to write a, a, a letter that I can hand these people? Because he gave them a direct message a year ago to leave me alone. And he was firm. He was hot. And I delivered the message. And I said he's not happy. And I said what my neurosurgeon had to say also that I am to do this manual labor and do my gardening, but that I need extra time. I can't have deadlines and pressure put on me. It only makes it worse. It makes it so I don't get a lot of sleep. And then I also, though yesterday, really came on stronger than what I had intended, but it had ancillary benefit. My handyman was inside. He heard everything that was said. He was really put out by how I was treated. And and it scared him, though. He, oh, well, I'll come out. You know, we can sort of spruce up the front. I said, there's nothing to spruce up. They have empty pots waiting for spring to plant their little annuals in. And I have my empty pots here. There's nothing else out here that is wrong for being here. And, you know, and I said, it's it, we cannot jump when they come and attack me. We have to hold steady and firm and strong. But he was, and then he'd remembered when the women had come, no decorating experience whatsoever. Not a clue about paint colors or what match or the rule of three, you know, one, three, five, that you do things in a certain number amounts for design and balance rather than having like two paint colors you you have three you know like maybe an offset color the main color and then a trim color or one that's becoming popular now they spray paint the whole thing i like to brush and roll paint I do things by hand it's meditative yes it takes me longer it's peaceful it's good for me. I can be in contemplation doing that. And it's not up to the homeowners to decide how fast or what type of work I do. I got all the decisions approved, including they want these women wanted me to put stone around the garage also. So I paid extra for it, although I don't want it around the garage. I wanted it in the center section to balance the color of my secondary paint that is the same color as the stones, approximately. So, and I've told them, I know what I'm doing. This is, I've done other houses. This is my last, but I have. So, anyway, I have to make a decision. Maybe they need a letter from a lawyer saying, do not approach again. They've been several times in this other man who's very much a bully and very high strung. He gets going on me and it upsets me. It stresses me out, I have to say. And I don't want to be other than a merciful neighbor. But as the police told me with the neighbor who sexually harassed me terribly, and his wife enables him, these old people. I'm old, but oh my goodness, it was awful. Exposed himself one time and then another time said things that were worse than exposing. And I, they couldn't arrest him for the exposing because I did not see him in the process of unzipping his pants. And he's a retired lawyer, not a successful one. He's from another state. I research people. 
<laughs> because I need to know who I'm dealing with because I attract problems. I have definitely all my adult life when I was no longer protected by my wonderful parents and extended family and friends in my small hometown. But I, I attract creeps, people with issues, and some I can work with, but with the sexual harasser, the police said no. And they said they are targeting you because you are alone and older. There's no one there with you. They don't bother any of the other neighbors. But I'm not to speak to them. They're not to speak to me. I have three statements I'm to give them, which I have to repeat every three or four months because the woman keeps trying to push it. But um, the man knows what he did. But anyway, that that's the issue. The temporal world comes in when you're just enjoying working on hanging a gorgeous light fixture in the house that is meant to be for the love of God and for whom Jesus is choosing to live here next. And I'm doing it omnio pro Deo, all for God. And this includes, though, how I am to handle the homeowner couple now, the president and his wife. And no, I don't want her here helping me uh, get the leaves out from around my plants. There's nothing to trim, but she's not been trained in pruning. She's not been trained in any horticultural. There are certain ways you prune trees. It's design. I was trained by a man who was in it 42 years. I was trained over a course of six years. So I, and I have expensive trees here. It's a beautiful landscaping. And I just not going to have just anybody out there whacking. And there's nothing to trim. She said, I'll come trim. There's nothing to trim. I just put them in last spring. So <laughs> anyway, pray for me. And if you have any suggestions, but this is what you deal with, with the world. Even when you're not in it, it comes to us. And how to handle it mercifully. For now, I'll just be quiet. I might leave him a note. Thank you for stopping by. Do not again, please. I do not want the pressure. And if the doctor will put in a little note, she's not to be under any stress. Do not approach her. She's disabled and abide by the ADA, American Disability Act. That might do it. But Or just keep dealing with it and be firm, firm, firm. I got hotter than what I intended. God bless his real presence in us. And... Um, leave your comments. I want to do my conversion story next. So, but I've got some work to do around here in the afternoon after I have this medical appointment next. God bless his real presence in us. And, um, even hermits can't escape the intrusion of the temporal world and troubles. It's the devil trying to upset me. So, Talk to you later, and I must remember love, love of all people, and they simply do not understand me. That's the story of my life, and I'm counting on being better understood and to fit in better on the other side. I'm counting on it. I think surely it will be that I will fit in, and you all too probably will all fit in better when we're dead to this world and on the other side.